y'all, this is Ellen Mongan. You just have just a minute to pause because it's time for take five at Wow Mom. Not just for women, for men too. My bracelet keeps trying to catch my dress. It's kind of like one of those little irritations in life. You just go, hey, do you see red? <laughs> you see red, and you know that's not always good. Red is anger rising up. Many little irritations can, be, can cause anger after a while in your soul if you don't solve the problem. Say, say you're a person that only drinks Diet Coke and you order it, it's like, it's like only Pepsi products. You can see red, then you have memorized. Oh, this place only serves Pepsi products. I'm gonna order something else like sweet tea. That's a solution. That's a very little baby solution for a problem that could leave it to be a little tiny irritation. It's like say you have a rock in your shoe and you're walking around, there's an irritation. You take the shoe off, dump the rock and you're good to go. Irritations can become molehills that grow to mountains. Wow, a mountain can be more than an irritation. It can be like a pain in the neck. Having known what a pain in the neck feels like, I try to avoid situations where the problem gets bigger and bigger instead of smaller and smaller. By becoming bigger and bigger, it becomes an irritation. It grows into like an angry fury of anger. <laughs> I didn't ever get angry when I was younger. I just, I don't know why. Man, it's holier than <laughs> But as an older person, little things can become big things. So my advice today is don't let the molehill grow into a mountain. What a good topic for an article. When your molehill grows into a mountain, God doesn't always take the mountain away. He has you sometimes climb that mountain. Wow, it can be really steep if you let the molehill grow and grow and grow and grow. Let's take weight for an example. It's not an anger or a mole, but it can grow into a mountain. You, if you start limit yourself with what you want to eat and avoiding like carbs and sweets and hardly ever doing those and you don't ever grow to having a mountain. But I got to pick on weight because that's really one of those areas that's so controversial. But in the area of anger, say you and your your husband have a certain desire to do certain things, like kind of our opposites, so this is a good topic. <laughs> say your husband is a homebody and you're like a go, go, go girl. Well then, you got to make compromises or you got to make different like we do a date night once a week on a Friday and you gotta say like what do you want to do and then what do you want to do if that doesn't work and you always seem like you're doing what the other guy wants to do you gotta make it like we're taking turns on a date night there's a solution many problems in life are not that easy to solve why because they've fed from a hill and they've grown to a mountain and then you gotta start with climbing the mountain one step at a time and making the solution one problem at a time no one can solve the problems in life overnight. So that brings us to Monday, which I didn't get on air too long, about the problems in our country. And I don't want to bring every time I'm on air for the next so many days to the election about our country, but we have a lot of problems in our country. We have a, a, a dividing wall that makes some people be on this team over here, team A and team B, A and B, always tension with each other, trying to get what they think is the best case scenario. But we're all adults. That's what I'm thinking. We're all adults. Let's sit down and talk about the problems one at a time. We're not going to be able to solve them all at once. Let's make our let's make our country a country of peacefulness and kindness, joy, the fruits of the spirit. Let's not be be backbiting and, and debating each other. Let's start with being human and live for Christ alone. I would never attempt to solve the problems of the world. <laughs> There's enough problems in one day for my own family of. Um, let's see, eight children, 15 grandkids, four son-in-laws, no, th I'm sorry, yeah, four son-in-laws, two daughter-in-laws, and a husband and my mom who lives here right now. No, as the problems arise, I, being the person that's like a peacemaker, a diplomat, tries to say, let's find a solution. These are easy problems. The problems of the world are hard. They've grown from a molehill to a mountain, so many of them. I hope that they attempt, whoever makes the election, whoever wins, whoever wins the Senate or the House, whatever is going on, they can stop and pause, brainstorm together, you know, do the, do the order of like, what is the most important problem we work on because we want our, our country to be united once again. Those who are believers, if you're not wanting unity in, in Christ, shame on you. We can't solve the problems of the world, but the Christians need to be living for the Lord. So I hope that those who are our builders our interceding for our country, our fasting and praying for our country, our putting out positive ways to solve things, positive 
um, you know, alliances and, and that no one's backbiting or slandering each other. It's just hard to do, but you know what? The more you live for Christ in your own heart, the more that others will see the good works you do and be drawn to the Father in heaven. No one wins by fighting. We know that. You're a marriage. <laughs> you fight, you lose. <laughs> you, you can debate and you make solutions. But you fight, you lose. So, hey, there's so many problems. I don't want to stop and harp on that. But let's find solutions. Solutions are such a big word. Solutions. You know, when you're a child and you're, um, you're a mother, I got a mother of so many, and they were all little at once. And I'd go, um, okay, she, he took my toy. I go, we're going to share, take five minutes each, and you can take a five minutes, and he takes a five Those are little problems, little solutions. We have big people, big problems, and we need some big solutions. That's going to be the name of my thing. Moles to, mole, moles to mountains and solutions in the midst of that. When I was teaching my children in the Little Boys Fellowship, which was where my guys gathered, kind of like once a week I had a turn watching some people's children. And I spoke to them about um, me first. They were going, me first, me first. Don't you feel like sometimes the adults are saying, my way, me first, it's all about me. Well, so they are. And so I would say to them, you know, the Bible says, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. You got to take turns and you got to, and I always want to be the one first. Then this Little Boys Fellowship, age four, John, John and Christopher, Mitchell and Chandler, and my son Josh started going, me last, me last, me last, because they wanted to be first, but they by being last. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, some people grow up and some don't. Let's, let's talk grown-ups in this world. Let's try to be, love one another, because that's hard enough right there. <laughs> Start with that. And then try to make solutions. And if you have, are around people talking politically, which this is going to time people do that, Try to make solutions, say positive things towards, don't be slandering each other and calling out names. Please, please, please try to be the grown-ups in the world and try to live for Christ alone. That's for the Christians alone. The other people, all we can do is be the good example and pray. That's all we can do. You be the good example and you pray. God has shown me many, many times over and over again. If I be the good example, I pray. When they go down and they need a friend who knows the Lord, they'll come to me and say, would you help me? Because the good example is what shines forth more than the words. So, hey, today of yours, boys, harden not your heart. I don't live for Christ today. How about you? I hope that you're, you're walking in a way that you feel the love of Jesus and his presence. Surround yourself with others that are doing the same. And then speak out for the truth. Don't speak out for you. Speak out for what God says. And he says, love one another. Love is of God. God is love. How will the world know if we don't do it? The world's a big place. <laughs> There's a lot of molehills becoming mountains. So pause today. Say, what can I do? Then I can be the example that Christ wants me to be of love one another. With my hair fixed and all look. See? Go. Have a good day. Nothing's ever perfect.